check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga huwan na gaya mo ang matuto. Hello everyone! Brand new lesson for a brand new week. I hope you're all doing great. Second lesson na tayo for this final quarter. Our lesson today is about expanding the content of an outline using primary and secondary sources. Ready ka na ba ulit matuto? Halika! Watch and learn from this video. The target most essential learning competency for this video is expanding the content of an outline using primary and secondary sources. I know that most of you are familiar with these words, but as usual, i-refresh lang natin sandali ang memory nyo by giving definitions to the following terms. First, outline. What is an outline? An outline is a map of your essay. It shows what information each section or paragraph will contain and in what order. It is the general plan of what you are going to write. Most outlines use numbers and or bullet points to arrange information and convey points. Para itong nagsisilbing skeletal framework ng iyong essay. Your essay won't be effective if you are not going to consider the most important things first. Para ding sa paggawa ng bahay o building, importante na magawaan muna ito ng mga poste o haligi para ito ang susundan upang maging matibay ang pagtatayo nito. Look at these examples. This show the pattern of an outline. Most outlines use numbers and or bullet points to arrange information and convey points. Why create an outline? An outline provides a summary and shows the logical flow of a paper. There are many reasons, but in general, it may be helpful to create an outline when you want to show the hierarchical relationship or logical ordering of information. For research papers, an outline may help you keep track of large amounts of information. For creative writing, an outline may help organize the various plot threads and help keep track of character traits. Many people find that organizing an oral report or presentation in outline form helps them speak more effectively in front of an audience. Below are the primary reasons for creating an outline. Aids in the process of writing. Helps you organize your ideas. Presents your material in a logical form. Shows the relationships among ideas in your writing. Constructs an ordered overview of your writing. Defines boundaries and groups. So, ang paggawa ng outline ay ang pagpaplano ng mabuti upang maging maganda ang kalalabasan ng iyong essay. Makakatipid ka din sa oras kung gagawin mo ito dahil hindi mo kailangang magbura ng magbura if you feel like you are adding inappropriate details in your essay. So, how do we make an outline? Let's begin with the pattern. As a rule, Students use the linear style when formatting their essay outlines. It means they rank arguments in order of their importance, from major to minor ones. Kagaya ng nandito sa example. Mag-start tayo sa title, syempre. Ano ba yung idea or topic that you would like to write about? Then, the Roman numerals which serve as your paragraph's main topic. It is followed by the capital letters for your subtopic. The subtopic must be connected with your main idea, that's why it is under it. Then it is followed by the supporting detail until it is narrowed down to a more detailed information like maybe 
giving some specific examples. You also have to be very careful in writing these elements in your outline. Each element must be aligned properly. Dapat na maayos na magkakatapat ang bawat bahagi ng iyong outline, kagaya nito, para mas madaling makita kung alin-alin ang bigger ideas at alin-alin ang supporting details upang mas madaling maintindihan ang ginawa mong outline. Habang mas nagiging detalyado ang inilalagay mong impormasyon, papasok naman ito ng papasok sa outline na ginagawa mo. Now that you already have a background about what an outline is, maybe you are now ready to expand the content of your outline using the primary and secondary sources. The next question is, what are the primary and secondary sources? Let's define them. When we say primary sources, provide immediate, first-hand accounts of a topic or evidence that originally and directly comes from the main source of information. Primary sources can include artifacts, original research, autobiographies, emails, diaries, just like the diary of Anne Frank, which was mentioned as an example in our previous lesson. Speeches, interviews and letters that tell what the people involved said or wrote. Surveys such as census or economic statistics. Artwork, performance, poem. Newspaper reports by reporters who witnessed an event or who quote people who did. Photographs, video, or audio that capture an event. Secondary sources are one step removed from primary sources, though they often quote or otherwise use primary sources. They can cover the same topic but add a layer of interpretation and analysis. Secondary sources can include biographies, commentaries, dictionaries, documentaries, Though they often include photos or video portions that can be considered primary sources. History books, literary reviews and textbooks, books about a specific subject, article critiquing the piece of art, analysis or interpretation of data, scholarly or other articles about a topic, especially by people not directly involved. Now that you know where to gather more information about your chosen topic, you can now expand the content of your outline. Ngayon naman, let me show you an example of a finished outline. Actually, there are two main types of outlines. One is the topic outline and the other one is the sentence outline. This is a topic outline. Notice that only words and phrases are used to present the ideas. The advantage of the topic outline besides its briefness is that its parallel structure reveals the logic you will follow in your paper. The other type is the sentence outline. As you can see, mas mahaba ito kumpara sa topic outline because it is composed of sentences. The advantage of a sentence outline is that it helps you make sure you become sufficiently specific about your subject rather than simply generalizing. Mas madali mo na din itong maililipat in a paragraph form dahil ito na rin naman halos lahat ang sentences na gagamitin mo sa iyong essay. Lastly, you have to follow these rules in outlining. Number 1. Do not mix topic and sentence outline methods. Number 2. Indent properly. 3. In a sentence outline, begin each point with a capital letter and place a period after each division number or letter and at the end of the sentence. Number 4. In a topic outline, Begin each point with a capital letter and place a period after each division number or letter. Do not place periods after ideas. And number five, strive for parallel wording among outline topics and subtopics. 
So did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed? If you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class dismissed!